Good morning, everybody. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, thanks, Stormy, for excellent uh, uh, speech about freedom. That's something I'm a big, big fan of. And those of you who know me also know that while I have a huge passion of making the world thank you, a better place, I'm combining it with a passion of making money. And <clears throat> it's not easy. But it's, I, I happen to be of the belief that one of the best ways of serving free and open source software is to channel revenues into it. But when you take that passion, you also must make difficult decisions on business models and licensing and many other things. So this is not the debate for it, but I'm available afterwards to debate that with you because that's a, a fantastic topic to, to discuss. So anyhow, I think we, we had some uh, good experience of this at MySQL. I was the CEO for MySQL for, for eight years. And I think we proudly can say that we built a free software product, a GPL product that made millions of users worldwide, enabled them to build applications, build businesses, do things with thousands of business partners who built the business. And when the company was acquired for a billion dollars by Sun Microsystems, hundreds of millions were distributed to the founders and the employees of the company. So that was a way of trying to combine the ambition of free and open source software with making money. And it was based on the, the assumption or belief that there are some people with lots of time and no interest in spending money, and there are other people with lots of money and no interest in spending time. So we are trying to sell something to those with money and give something to those with time. And you, you will see and you have seen in the open source world that there are a number of business models that are trying to address them. Unfortunately, none of them is perfect. But now I've joined a new company. I joined Eucalyptus, a great new project, and now a company in the cloud space. And I'm here to talk a little bit about what we're doing there. So first, just an overall view of what cloud computing in our uh, understanding means. So in the 80s, we got the client-server model, the client-server paradigm, where you had an application on the server and you had a thick client on the client side on the desktop, typically. And that's a paradigm that has remained for, for, ever, for the last 20 years in, in use in, in the IT world, uh, in, in, the, in the data centers and in companies. And we saw with the, with the advent of the internet and open source how the client side broke down. And instead of having thick clients, we started using internet browsers and we, we built it on for the internet. But still there were fundamental pieces that were, were all designed for essentially for single machine use. And the software that was developed was uh, specifically designed, designed to run on a single machine. Now as we go into full cloud computing, we are re-architecting the whole stack and building everything for massively distributed use. And of course, we know that the browser is such. The browser is for distributed use. One single browser gives you access to any applications. But we are seeing the same, similar changes on the database level, where we now need massively distributed databases. And the old relational databases don't really serve that need. Maybe the relational model can serve the need, but the current products don't. And it's the same thing that's happening with the cloud platforms, that they are from the ground up designed to be massively distributed, run on many machines, and allow you to take any, ultimately any compute resource and provision it to any application of your choice. And that is then a cloud. And it's only now starting. We have lots of announcement this year. Everybody is talking about cloud computing, but it's very early. We have about an estimated 2% of IT workload today running on clouds. And in five years, it may grow to 20%. So there's a huge growth that we are anticipating. <clears throat> but who knows? There's always over-enthusiasm in the beginning, and then it takes a little bit longer to build it up. So, so let's see how fast it really happens. So what's then the role of cloud computing and free and open source software? And Stormy touched on one of the subjects here, which is a major change. Many of the open source licenses and principles were built for a world where you distribute software. And specifically, the GPL license with its uh, copyleft clauses with the reciprocity requirement is based on a notion that you distribute software. 
Well, in a cloud environment, you don't necessarily distribute it. You run the software on your servers, and you distribute the output of the, the application. You distribute the service. And this is why when we look at the stack, and you could say that the, the cloud environment primarily has three layers, software as a service, platform as, as a service, and infrastructure as a service, that you will see a lot of non-open source code there today. So in the software as a service space, most of the big players are closed source. In platform as a service, where you have Google App Engine, and you have Microsoft Azure, and a few others, the biggest ones and the most dominant ones are closed source. And it's only in the infrastructure as a service that you are seeing significant open source today. So on the public side, meaning providing public clouds like the Amazon cloud, you know, Amazon itself is not open source, but the challenger, Rackspace, just yesterday announced their OpenStack initiative, which is an open source initiative to build a cloud stack for public uh, clouds. And then on the private side, meaning on-premise clouds, where you have companies like Open Nebula, you have Eucalyptus, and you have Cloud.com, who are all open source providers of infrastructure as a service. So it will be interesting to see in the coming years how much will be open, how much will be closed, how this whole world will, will play out. We have big vendors there like VMware, Amazon, Microsoft, maybe soon, Oracle and others who are coming in, not necessarily open source vendors. I think for them it will be strategic to be in cloud computing, and I think it is on us to produce open source code and build open platforms where we collaborate together and build an alternative to the closed, uh, the closed offerings. So a few comments on Eucalyptus. What we are building is a highly scalable cloud platform for on-premise use. So we're focusing on those who would like to run a cloud in their own environment. We license it under the GPL3. We currently have about 12,000 downloads per month of our product. You can also use it as a service if you like. We have the Eucalyptus um, Community Cloud, which is free for you to use. You sign up and you have an account on our cloud. You can also download the Ubuntu Enterprise Cloud, which includes Eucalyptus. And if you belong to those who have more money than time, then we're very happy to sell you the Eucalyptus Enterprise Edition, which is for targeted at enterprises who are building mission-critical cloud deployments for their own internal use. The company was founded by six PhDs. It started as an NSF-funded research project at UC Santa Barbara. Suddenly they realized that the, pro, the cloud platform was very, very popular. People downloaded it all over the world. They agreed with the, the university to spin it out. The UC Santa Barbara is still a shareholder in our company, and we started building a business where we are building an open source platform for anybody to use and download, and where we have an enterprise edition that we are selling to corporations and thereby generating revenue for our company. And with that, um, I'm nearly ready to conclude my presentation here. I have one question for the audience, which is, do you happen to know what the acronym Eucalyptus stands for? This is sort of a demonstration of the academic background of this whole project. They chose the name Eucalyptus because there are lots of Eucalyptus trees in Santa Barbara. And of course, they quickly realized that what it really stands for is elastic utility computing architecture linking your programs to useful systems. <laughs> so, so now you know. So <clears throat> if you haven't downloaded it, please do so. You go to eucalyptus.com and it's available for download for you. Thank you.